we had linked up one day did a little some some took a couple of videos okay. and we sent some of those videos to her ex-boyfriend you you sent videos yeah, so to her ex-boyfriend she, she has she has told me to hello i am here in New York City, at Washington Square Park. It is a beautiful energy. There's people running all around, uh, sweating on each other, spitting on each other, soaking up each other's juices, each other's energies. It's a wonderful scene. It feels like it's Woodstock here all the time, and I love it. I love Washington Square Park. I'm uh, stoked to be here, and uh, I'm ready to talk to some people. So let's get into it and uh, do, some, do some geckoing. Come hither. Bam, bam. Step into my office. Oh, What's going on with be you, here. man? It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you here. I appreciate it. It's a beautiful day out here, out in Washington Square Park, New York City. We outside. It's icy school in the cut. It's nice in here. It's like a Thursday morning, and it's like lit here. It's, it feels like it's like a music festival here every day or something. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's always something interesting going on in this park. You feel mm -hmm. me? You're going to meet mm -hmm. interesting people every single day. You just it's just and then uh, it's an unpredictable environment, but in a in a good way. You feel me? Mm -hmm, it's like, mm -hmm. like you want to be here. You want to see what's about to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's your name, man? My name is Scooby. Scooby, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Lyle. What do you do? You live around here? Do you come here often? Yeah, of course. I um I'm residing in the Bronx right now, uptown. But yeah, I be coming. I've been coming out here for a little over a year and a half now, making my bread, meeting new people, promoting my music, mm. uh, party promotions, all that stuff. You make music. What uh what kinds of like themes do you make music about? Like what inspires? Well, the tunes. I grew up. I grew up listening to rap, and um, but well, my one of my biggest inspirations was definitely Mac Miller, rest in peace. You feel me? Um, but I like mixing it up. I like in incorporating a little bit of like grunge, rock, um, that type of that type of shit into my mm -hmm. rap music, and I like just making it. I like making it my own. Mm -hmm, shit mm -hmm. like that, regular shit. That's awesome. Is Scooby like your your artist name, or do you my have artist an artist name? name? My artist name is Icy Scoob. I C Y Scoob. space S C O O B. I'm on all platforms: Apple Music, SoundCloud, Spotify. Okay, YouTube. I'm gonna check it out after this. I appreciate. So it. Scooby, listen. I heard you before you wanted to come on. You were like talking with your friend over there, and you were like. <laughs> Man, should I talk about this thing going on with this person? I, and you were like debating whether or not to talk about it. I How will. do you feel? Do you want to talk? You don't have to. No, you don't no, want no, to, no, but no, no. You want to talk what? about for it? For sure, What's for the sure. Thing? Like, so, so it's some little spicy shit going on. But okay, hit me. It ain't. I'm going to just keep it short and sweet, like I said. But sure, man. So, long story short, I had ended up meeting this girl. She had some little bit of um, ex boyfriend problems, whatever the case is. She yeah. Made me, made me try to trust her, whatever the case is. Boom, boom, boom. Long story short, we had we had linked up one day, did a little some some, took a couple of videos, okay. and we sent some of those videos to her ex boyfriend. You you sent videos yeah, so to her ex boyfriend. She, she had she had told me to. Long story okay. short, whatever the case is, me and her we had a little falling out not too long ago, about a, like a couple of days ago, and I went to over to her crib to pick up like some of my stuff that I had left her, a couple yeah. of, like sweater, a little sweater, a little necklace, whatever the case is. Yeah. Boom. And when she opens the door, her ex is in the apartment with her. And I'm like, whoa, on. So now I'm just like, yo, I'm not even going to hold you. I'm not even mad because this nigga looks like a clown and you look like a thot. Because mm -hmm. how are you going to take back the bitch that you saw her get fucked by the next man? Mm. Damn, bro. Were you like, crazy. now when she, so it was her idea you said yeah, she, to she, send the video. Yeah. Let me ask you something. When, when, when she brought the idea up, the first were you thing, on board immediately or were you like, I don't know, that could maybe... The first thing that popped up to my head was like, how are you going to tell me you over this dude, but you want to do this? But also, I don't give a fuck because I'm going to fuck. Sure. You feel sure. me? Same well, yeah, because it's, it's an interesting thing, right? Because if, if she were really over exactly. the boyfriend, you, you she wouldn't even, even want you the wouldn't revenge. Want, exactly. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want that, that type of reaction out of yeah, him. Yeah. So, I mean... I played my part, I did what I did, and I still come out on top. Do you like uh, filming yourself? I mean, when I'm putting in that work, of course. Okay. Do you when 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 the camera's on you? Do you feel like an extra pressure to perform? Not to no, act? not no extra pressure because it, that's just what I do. It's just it's just me. I was just crashing. Her okay. Shit. You were yourself. Are you very exactly. comfortable on of camera? Of course, of course. Because nice. it's just that's just natural shit to do. Mm -hmm. So you're not seeing this girl anymore? Hell no. Pfft. You won't even catch me dead near her crib. 
And what is uh, next for you in your dating life? Are you meeting? You said you're meeting all kinds of people. Are you? I, I'm always meeting new people. I'm never. I'm never afraid to put myself out there. You feel me? On to the next chapter. It is okay. what it is. It was a. It was a fling. Over it. I didn't feel no type of way about it because, like I said, I still came out on top, and they both look like clowns right now. So let me ask you this: uh, You've been having all these flings, right? Does, is any part of you like? Looking for a wife, looking to settle down, or are you just, you know, uh, out here having fun in, in New time, York? I, you gotta understand, I'm young. I'm only 22 years old. I'm about to mm. be 23. I don't, I ain't really looking for no life partners, something solidified. Yo, if you fucking with me, if you fucking with my Bob and I'm fucking with yours, then we just go from there and see, we, see where it blooms. You feel me? Is there a type of, of how would you describe the vibe of a, the type of person that you get along with? I like people who are themselves, you feel me? I like people who, who don't act a certain way because they're with a different type of crowd, mm -hmm. you feel me? You gotta, you gotta be genuine with yourself and you gotta be genuine with the people that you surround yourself with because mm -hmm. that's, a, that's the kind of people that you're gonna attract, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you feel me? Have you always been very uh, uh, much like comfortable being yourself? Of course, of course. Obviously growing up it was, it was a little difficult to come to terms with like the type of person that I am, but like as you get older you just, learn to grow into your mold and then you just pretty much just evolve into the person that you yeah. need to become. You said that you felt like it was kind of difficult for you to come to terms with the type of person you am you are just now? When I was younger. When you were up, yeah. well, can, can I ask why you felt like it was difficult? Well, it was just because I, I just I just felt so insecure. I was an insecure type of person. Mm -hmm. You feel mm -hmm. me? It was just like the shit. Uh, growing up around where I grew up, I got bullied a lot for my weight and shit. Really? Yeah. I used to, I used to be a little Heavier when I was younger, I used to be a little chubbier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But not no more. Now I don't really care because it's just like people like me for who I am. It ain't it ain't about how I look. It's about how I carry myself. So I'm just mm -hmm. gonna continue carrying myself the way that I'm going to. So in, in the the journey from being insecure about your weight and people bullying you and whatnot to where you are now, where you seem very comfortable with yourself, like what what do you think? Was it that kind of got you from that insecure point to where you are now? If you want me to keep it a buck with you, I took a lot of LSD. Okay. You know, I know you're not the first person to like, like <laughs> I actually literally, we, I've been doing all these live shows and I just had someone last night come up and be like, yeah, I also uh, on LSD had like a realization that, that changed. Well, like, tell me about the trip. What, 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 what was it that made you come to this realization? Honestly, I was just, I was in my bedroom. I was smoking from my bong and I was just like, I forgot which anime I was watching. It was either a comic got killed or Hunter X Hunter or one of them two. But I was like, I was in my room and it was hot. I was like sweating like crazy. I just, I was like, all right, I guess I'm gonna take off my shirt. And where I was sitting on, there's like a mirror right in front of me in my bedroom at the time. So I'm just like staring at myself in the mirror with my shirt off, tripping balls. And I'm just like, this is me. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I can't hate this person because this is literally me. Mm -hmm. So I just at that point I'm like, I bet, fuck all that shit, mink, throw that shit out the window, and yep. now I'm just happy with literally everything about myself. That's wonderful, man. It is. Uh, it is a weird thing, like when you're tripping and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, that's me. I'm a guy. I I actually exist. Word. That's my form. Trying to learn to love yourself. That's a fact. I like that, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Scooby, what's next for you in the future? I know you're working on music, but like, what, where, where do you want your life to go, man? What, what do you see for yourself? Man, in reality, I just see myself swimming in this money, swimming in this pussy, and just swimming in these drugs. You feel me? I'm happy. I'm content with the path that I'm choosing. I'm content with the path that I'm going down on right now, and I just see a lot of, just a lot of success in my future, and. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep following that stall. I love that, man. I'm wishing you success, too, Scooby. I appreciate it. I appreciate anything it. Anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Man, just follow me on Instagram, I-C-O-Y-S-X-O-O-B. You feel me? Run up my streams on SoundCloud, um, Apple Music, Spotify, IC School, you feel me? And just stay in tune because it's not going to be the last you see of me, I swear. C can I ask one last thing? What? Where did Scooby come from? All right, so a little uh, quick yeah, little story. Yeah, give story, so, please. After I turned 13, I moved from South, uh, from North uh, New York to South Carolina, and I went to there my high school years. I ended up meeting this one dude. His name his name was Brian, but he went by the name Shaggy, and I ah. hung out with him all the time, smoking a lot. We smoking every day, sure. eating a lot, munching a lot, 
he was a white boy and I'm a little like colored, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So we just ended up being that was Shaggy. Fuck it. That's Scooby. Mm, okay, I was gonna ask if there was a Shaggy, yeah. but I didn't want to be corny yeah, about I'm it. I'm not gonna hold you, yo. Free my son Shaggy though. He got locked up uh what like not too long ago. He got what did um, he do? You don't, no. have to, you don't have to. You don't have yeah. to bring him up. You don't want to. I understand. I understand. Just free my son, though, for real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, well, free Shaggy, maybe. Uh, and then, what is your Instagram again? It's I C Y S X O O B. I C Y. Yo, Shaggy. Thank you very much for talking to the Gecko, man. I appreciate, appreciate you. you. This won't be the last I'm seeing of you. Definitely not. Take care, ma'am. I fuck with that guy. Hello. Hi. How are you? I like this jacket. Thank is you. Is that genuine animal fur? No, I would never. You would never? No. You're above that? Yeah. What's your name? I'm Jade. Jade, very nice to meet you. What's I'm your a gecko. Name? Lyle. Gecko? What's uh what's life like, Jade? Life at the moment is a bit crazy. Why is it crazy? Well, so I was engaged. Okay. And I'm not anymore. That's 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 pretty crazy. Yeah. How so how long were you with the person before you were engaged with them? Uh, about a year. Okay. Yeah, about a year. Um, and now we're not. Okay. And I'm trying to navigate that. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I've gone a bit cold after it. Really? Yeah. Did, were you like, you believed in love and yeah, now you don't? Yeah, I was like a complete hopeless romantic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is it. This is forever. Blah, blah, blah. Then some things happened. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like... It doesn't exist anymore. Mm. When you were in your hopeless romantic love, what was like, what were your thoughts about love? Like what was engulfing you in that moment? I was like, I was like the girl that like always like had my dream wedding planned out. Yeah, like yeah. loved, like needed like that to happen. And then I'm pretty young, like I'm 23. So I got engaged at 22. Really? Yeah. yeah. Did, did a lot of people in your life tell you not to do that? Actually, everyone told me to do it. Really? Yeah, because everyone really, really liked him and stuff. I won't say too much because I, I don't know where this is going. Sure. But um, everyone said go for it. Like, they thought it was the right idea. Mm -hmm. They were happy for me. Um, I mean, but then after we ended, they were like, yeah, that probably wasn't the best idea. I was like, well, you guys could have told me that before I did it. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but now I'm like, I'm like meeting new people, but I'm like, it's not really... You're you ha now when you meet a person you're like I can see this yes. two years so into the I future can see all and the it's red hopeless. flags so and like when they're not even there though. So if you're cool with telling us like what was it that transitioned you from being hopelessly in love to this new like you know feel feelings about love and and kind of from a hopeful romantic to a hopeless one. I feel like confidence maybe. Okay. Like and like relying more on myself okay rather than i felt like i relied on other people before and yeah. now i'm like i don't need anyone but myself yeah like and that's that's it that's though. very beautiful by like, the way that's i i, I <laughs> love that because i think a lot of people they get lost in the trap of like thinking that they need yeah, somebody yeah. to complete them no, but actually because that was me completely like my whole life pretty much i was like i feel like i just need this one person if i get this one person like yep. because i was such a hopeless romantic yep. i'm like if i do this if i get this person if they love me like my life would be great all my problems yep. are going to go away blah 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 but that obviously doesn't work like that and I feel like it comes from you mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and you're born you and you leave you yep so like and you're stuck with you yep. for the time between so yep. like that's that it's an interesting thing because you 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 would like it to be that easy right yes, yeah, you meet a yeah. person they're great you come into a relationship with them life's beautiful forever yep. but actually you need to like do long yep. hard work yep. on yourself with yourself and it's less of a of a sexy notion because it's a long, arduous process that really never ends. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's all for the best, right? Because yeah. you're full. Because at the very, even though it's a harder thing, yeah. you're in control. Yeah. But you're like you you in a relationship, you're like yeah, fifty percent of control. I know. And the other fifty percent is is totally. And now it's just like a hundred percent. This sounds so cliche, but like, no, it, it, it's I mean like, the cliche things they're cliche for yeah, a reason. They're fucking yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. And like, but now it's like a hundred percent time for me and like Fuck yeah. I'm um I'm studying to be a surgeon so oh, wow. like now I'm like 100% of my time is dedicated for me and my school and yep. my career and my future and it's like um I don't know what the word is like beautiful in it a is way. very beautiful like it's motivating then it's just like my time like my time is set for what I want to do mm -hmm. and I'm not 
picking up for anyone else or answering to anyone else. Can I ask you this? Because yeah. so this this relationship was your idea of loves soured or your idea of this person specifically? Love. What was it that soured it? Was it something about him or was it something about just the general feeling of being in a relationship? I think that my whole life, as I said, I, I felt like if you had love, that like you had everything or something. You, you, yeah. were, you made it. You, you Like when I got engaged, I felt in that moment like... Uh, this is it. I made it. I got someone loves me. Someone, you yeah. know. And I thought that that was like the epitome of of the meaning of our lives. They like mm -hmm, love. Mm -hmm. But over the past few months, like I've realized that family, yep, friends, yep, your social life, your work life, your yep. personal life, your yep. spiritual life. Like yep. there's so many components to like making your life happy and it's not just love that makes your not life at happy all. yeah and so yeah i think that i mean yeah like that person in specific definitely like soured it a bit but mm -hmm. i think it's just the idea that love is an added bonus onto your life but it's not the whole part of your like it's not everything of your life what are, what kinds of things have you been doing that you felt like you couldn't do when you were in the relationship oh now gosh, that you're single so much so much i've been Going out a lot, but like not like in a bad way. Like I mean, sure. going out isn't like seeing my friends so much more. Sure, yeah. I've built my like my sister's here right now. Oh, that's awesome. I've had such a great relationship with my sister lately. My mom, more time for like my family. Um, I've been grinding in school. Like you, so when you much said you time. had to be a, when you said you were gonna be a surgeon, I was like, yeah, that's yeah. gonna take. Yeah. You're gonna be working like hundred yeah. hour weeks. Yeah, and I shit. know, I know. The yeah. Which you should. I mean, it should be. Yeah. I say this to everyone who like yeah. is studying medicine. It should be really hard to become a surgeon. No, it should You're be. You're cutting open you, people. You don't want someone that has like no work ethic. Oh like, yeah. Working on your brain. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, no. Uh, time for a lot more time for God. Um, a lot more time for just whatever I want to do, really. Yeah. And like, yeah. I felt like I when I was in that relationship, I was kind of scheduling my things around, around the other person's the schedule, other person? you know? Yeah, which, like, I guess it is like that in a relationship. It's, like, give and take or whatever, but yeah. um, it's such a huge sense of freedom, I feel now. And I think I feel this freedom because I've learned that love isn't Everything. the end-all, be-all, yeah, you know? Yeah, sure, because sure. Because before, when I had gone through a breakup or what have you, like, yeah. it, it felt devastating, but this time around, it's been, like, so much more like motivating i love that because yeah. it is a devastating thing yeah. to realize like yeah. oh the thing i thought was going to be the end all be all actually yeah. isn't because you're yeah. like what do i do now yeah so it starts devastating yeah. but then you're like oh i'm yeah. not done there's yeah. so much more to yeah. life and it's and a beautiful like, don't thing. get me wrong like did i go on a manic spiral after like a hundred percent like of course i drove 20 hours to florida like when it happened to see my family they lived down there but like I got over it, like I worked through it, and now I'm like, I'm actually good, you know? Jade, I'm very happy yeah. for you. This is Thank awesome. You. Thank you for sharing Thank all of this no with problem. us. No problem. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram. Sure. Uh, Jade Keo. it's uh, J-A-D-E-K-E-O-G-H-H. -H. Um, if you go to Columbia, I go to Columbia, so I'll see you around. Awesome. But uh, that's about it. Um, I do want to end with... Hit me. Love yourself, and the rest will follow. Jade, thank you very much for talking to Gecko. That Pleasure was awesome. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much, Jade. Good luck to you. Thank you. That was great. Did you hear any of that? Did you hear her talking at all? Yeah, just a little bit. That was, she was talking about like she, she thought that love was the most important thing in life, and then it kind of soured, and that was devastating, but then she realized, like, oh, there's so much more to life, and right, it kind right. of... Opened her up and that was awesome. I really enjoyed talking to her about that. Smart girl. What's your name? My name is Spaz. Spa Spaz? Yeah, Spaz. Spaz. Nice to meet you, man. Nice what you. What are you all about? What's going on? Well, obviously from the name, I'm a Spaz. <laughs> okay. But I make music. You know, I'm a break dancer, b boy. I street perform. I'm mm -hmm. actually about to go do it in a in a few minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, like Showtime, Showtime. Yeah, like yeah, that's me right there. So yeah, I do that. Uh, actually, today is really like. It's really like a monumental day for me and it's crazy I get to do this because I've been fighting this case for like a couple years. I ended up doing like 
two, 24 months in jail for something like I did for my mom or whatever, okay. you know, trying to be a family guy, be okay. grown. Okay. As a young adult, I was 18. So I did 24 months and then I still had to deal with the case after that. And today was the last day of everything. So I'm officially a free man. Oh, I'm congratulations, papers. man. Thank you, man. Thank That's you. awesome. That's yeah, awesome. So you said great. you did something. You, and we don't have to get into the specifics of anything. But what's your relationship yeah. like with your mom, man? Well, now, like, me and my family don't even talk. So Really? Yeah, so it's like... I didn't do it for nothing, but I did it for a reason. If I wouldn't have did it, you know, it wouldn't be the way it is now with her. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't probably st be staying where she's staying, or mm -hmm. like you know, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in. So, mm -hmm. I'm so, grateful. so you don't talk to her anymore. Nah, don't we don't know. have to get into anything you don't want to get into. But nah. can I ask why? It just you know, just family stuff. I don't sure, know. sure, sure, sure. You come like after doing that much, you do 24 months in in jail, prison as a young adult. You you not you're not the same no more when you come out. Mm. You know, so like. Your mentality is different. The way you move, like everything about you is so different. It's just like you getting used to society and society getting used to you. It's just like it takes time to coexist. And sometimes you just have to be away from the people you yeah, love yeah. because it's harder for them. Can I hear more about like any sort of specific differences in your mindset that you found when you like first came into jail when you got out? I mean, like before jail, <laughs> I was a lover boy. So Okay. Like, you know, I was... I was always there for everybody, everything. I wouldn't really do much for myself. Even now, like, I'm still, like, I'm a selfless person. Like, you know, I would give people, like, the shoes off my feet, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But going to jail made me realize, you know, like, being that type of person in jail wouldn't get you far. Interesting. You know, Interesting. or, like, let's say, like, I had a female that I was with. We was with each other for probably, like, a year before I went to jail. And while I was in jail, like, she was messing with my friends and stuff like that. So, like... Like, it changed a lot. It showed me, like, people were not going to always be there. Mm. Like, even, like, down to family. They they wasn't always able to send me money or they just wouldn't send me money or answer my phone calls, no letters, pictures. But I had certain people that would and, like, I would be grateful for certain things. So, like, I would, like, thinking after jail is just, like, you know, you got to just don't even worry about what's there and what's not. Just mm. be grateful for it. Mm. Like, mm. Whatever comes, it comes. Like, it is what it is. You can't. You gotta live for today. You can't really think too much on the future or what's mm. gonna happen or how you should, like, you know, how you should do things because when you actually get to that point, you're never gonna do that. Mm. You're gonna mm. act off an of impulse. Mm. So, so when you came, so you first started out, you felt like you were a very, you know, sort of giving and you like you would give yeah. people the shoes off of yeah, your feet. Like, and then when you came out, you're like, I'm not doing that anymore. It's not, not just like I'm not doing it, it's just like I was more conscious to it. Like, okay. You know, like, be why like am more I selective giving you, with yeah. who you're giving your energy yeah, to? Like, why am I giving you the shoes off of my feet? Sure. If you wouldn't give me, you know, a crumb off of your plate. Sure, sure. So, mm -hmm. if you're uh, not talking to your family anymore, what do you have people in your life that you're cool with that you do feel are, are worthy of, of your graciousness? I mean, I feel like everybody's worthy of everything, but it's just, I don't know. You just gotta take the time to, you know, come see me, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Figure me out. Let let me figure you out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was it like when you first got out of jail? Like, what what were you doing before? Like, were you in school or were you working at all? Oh no, I, uh, school was never a thing for me. Okay. But like like I said, I, I I dance, you know, and I make music. So I've been doing that my whole life. Mm -hmm. I came home. I started doing like um like concerts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I do the street performing thing, so I still, you know, was I stay healthy, I stay in shape, just going mm -hmm. to the gym, mm -hmm. just like regular stuff. Tried to get into like dating, but it's like it's scary because yeah, why? Especially coming out of jail, sure. Like you're you're kind of thirsty. Okay. But yeah, yeah. More so, like I wasn't, I never really cared about stuff like that. It was just like the fact that I don't want to waste my time. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. may show a woman a certain type of vulnerability, and it gets held against you, or you may not. And that gets held against you. Sure. Like you can't be too dominant or assertive. Sure. You can't be too vulnerable. You can't sure. be too sad. You can't be a bitch. Like, what am I supposed to do? So when you say that you're kind of like navigating the dating world very carefully, yeah. are you like looking to hook up? Or are you looking for like an actual kind of stable relationship? I mean, I can't hook up with nobody that I can't have a conversation with. Sure. Yeah. I'm not going to lie because it's just like... A nut might be a nut or whatever, but you know it's still it's still time and energy that comes with that. Like, okay, you know, I'm I'm Native American, so like I I'm very spiritual, so like I do believe in like when you do certain things and you swap and stuff like that. That's your bodily aura is going into me, me. You know I'm going into you. Like, 
I don't want to. I don't want to finish. Mm -hmm. And the next day, I'm fucking depressed. Right. Why am I depressed? I just had some great sex. Like you sure. know, it's like you shouldn't feel like that. So I really like. I'm really more like on point with who to take my time with. Well, you mentioned that you're a very spiritual guy. Do you yeah. have like a main sort of thesis spiritual belief that that guides you? I mean, not necessarily. It's just like in my heritage and like you know, but. At the end of the day, I do trip a lot. Okay. <laughs> you know, so when it do like when I when I am like becoming like one with myself or like trying to get into my roots or like the deeper meaning of life, I just you know trip and just think. It's there's not really much to it. You don't need religion. You don't really have to you know worship a, a dominance or mm -hmm. anything. It's all yeah. I guess I feel like it's all within yourself. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. here. We just we here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See yourself. When you die, it's over. There's no. There's nothing. So, yeah. You just gotta take it in while it's here. I feel that. I, I feel, uh, uh, anytime I think about that, I feel very inspired to be just in the moment. Because right. this, this is all we got. Exactly. Future's not guaranteed. Right. Past is over. Right, right. What got you into music? You uh, Break dancing. How have you been doing that just your entire life? Or do you remember yeah. kind of like what started you doing that? Funny thing, it's, it's funny. My mom said I came out dancing. Like, <laughs> literally. Yeah? She said I came out like doing the Superman moves. <laughs> So like yeah, like dancing has like been in my blood. Like nobody in my family has any talent. I got two younger sisters and I have an older brother. Nobody has any talent. Mm -hmm. So like they just do like regular stuff, you know, go to school or whatever. And so it's like that I took that serious, me being young and I that's just something I stuck with my whole life. That's the outlet mm -hmm. to, you know, anything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you make music too. Yeah, I make music. What kinds of things inspire your music? Hurt, heartbreak, struggles. You know, like every, all the bad stuff, all the bad stuff. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. You know, the good stuff is like we could talk about all the good stuff, but it's like how like how nonchalant do you want us to be? Sure. I'm not like every other rapper or artist that's going to say, you know, women this and money that. Sure. Because at the end of the women and the money, how are you really feeling? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I talk about all the bad stuff and hopefully bring the bad stuff to light. So that way it's like more of an like a like awareness music does it feel like a healing process to you to take all the bad stuff going on with you and like put it into something yeah definitely definitely and it's not just like it's healing for me it's also like helping for others so like because a lot of people call me or like text me like fans or like random people tell me like i've cried to your music before mm -hmm. it's so like and it's just like like damn like i, I had the power to touch somebody so like I mean, just me knowing that I can, you know, touch somebody else, that's healing in itself. Like, it doesn't even matter about the music. That's I just want to get my point across. Dude, what's, uh, what do you think the future looks like for you? What do you hope to achieve while you're alive on the earth? Everything. That's awesome, There's nothing man. specific. Like I said, I don't, I don't dwell on the future. I don't dwell on past. I'm on today. Today, I'm going to get fucked up. Tomorrow... I'm going to be recovering, probably. Spaz, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? T-H-A-T-B-O-Y-L-S-D-T. That's my name. Look it up. Spotify, Apple, YouTube, whatever. Check me out. L.S. Demon. SG. You're friends with uh, Scoob, too, right? Yeah, my boy Scoob. Do you guys make music together? Yes, we in the same team. And we be fucking shit up, too, on the mic. You already know that. How'd you, how'd you guys meet? We met in jail. You met in jail? Yeah, it's, that's been my best oh, friend man. ever since. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's been my best friend ever since. So. Have you got done have you like done a song together? Oh yeah, we got music, we got videos, we okay, got I'm gonna check movies. you guys out, man. I got documentaries out too, SVU, CCU Film Festival, all of that stuff. So it's good to see you guys fucking hanging out and sticking together, man. That's awesome. Hey, man, it's great to be here. Yo. Nice to meet you. Spatch, very nice to meet you, man. Scoob. Good to see you guys. Thank here. you for talking to a gecko. Oh man, that was good. By the way, I love the Oreo shoes. Those fucking rock. Oh man, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, man. Hey, thank you guys. That was awesome. Did you hear that conversation? That was so inspiring. Yeah, that was really cool. Like, I always walk past these kind of, like, you know, skaters are always right here in yeah. Washington Square, yeah, and I never yeah. really, like, even pay attention to them. But it's, I, people are so deep. I know. I love, by the way, I just, I fucking. Love the energy in Washington Square Park. Yeah, it's so cool. I love it here. I want to move here one day. It's so. This eclectic. is like the coolest place no, ever. No, you live here, right? Like in the bushes, because you're a gecko. I right? will live here in the bushes, uh, and probably cheaper than uh, renting. Oh yeah. What's your name? Joel. 
Joel. What's your name? Lyle. Oh, Lyle. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. What's uh, what's going on with you and your life? What are you all about? Ah, uh, um, fuck if I know. I uh, start. <laughs> well, okay. What okay, are you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm a student. Okay. What are you um, studying? At like many of the other people here, I study musical theater. You study musical theater. Yeah. What do you? What is your dream role? Take a second to think about it. Yeah, no rush. Please. Thank you. Um, so let me <laughs> think of mine. Um. When I was in yeah. high school, I really wanted to be, um, and I chickened out, I didn't do it, but I wanted to be Sebastian in The oh, Little Mermaid, because in the shower, I sing Under the Sea all the time, Yeah. and I feel like it'd be a fun song to sing in front of an audience. No, I'd love it. I mean, well, David Diggs just stole your role. Who did? David Diggs. Oh, in the new in one. In the new one. In the new one. Yeah, They're exactly. remaking all the, the classic movies. Yeah. It's... Oh, well, okay. So... I loved the Jungle Book, right? The initial yeah. Jungle Book. Yeah. And then I just felt like it went downhill from there, right? They remade like, the Jungle Book, didn't they? The, the remake. I'm saying yeah. the remake of the Jungle Book, like the yeah. first live action that they did, was yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah. And then everything else I thought was kind of, it just right, it didn't right. really they live did the, up It's weird because the timeline, they did the Jungle Book back yeah. in like 20... Like 10 or something, well, and then now they're like, okay, let's do everything else right exactly, now. Exactly, because yeah. it's an easy, you know, they already have written all the stories, so it's just like easy money. Joel? For Disney, Joel, yeah. What's your dream role? Dream role. Um, in musical theater, I'd want to play um, Princeton and Avenue Q. Have you seen Princeton Avenue Q? Ave I love Avenue Q. Avenue Q, it's Princeton my favorite Avenue, musical. I love Avenue my Q, mom, man. Um, that was her favorite musical. So oh, when great. I was like two years old, she'd be playing, you know, like the internet is for porn. Internet is for porn. Yeah. Everyone, I was, ah, fuck. Everyone's a little bit racist, just yep. like in the house while I was learning how to walk. Yep. Yep. Um, so I think. Have you seen it live? Yeah. That's I, awesome. I saw it with my mom actually when we oh, first wonderful. came to New York. That's awesome, um, man. Off Broadway before it closed. That's awesome. It's, so you're studying to be musical theater. Yeah. What do you? What do you? I mean, I was gonna ask what do you want to do, but I assume you want to go be a, a, an actor an on Broadway. An entertainer. Okay. Um, that'd be cool. What What I'm, is it that makes you want to do that? What What is it about the lights, the people, the action? I think everyone's kind of searching for human connection, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, that's kind of how I feel when I'm in a show. Yeah. I'm connecting with others. I'm connecting yeah. with you right now, of right? Course. Um, and there's this, like, sense of love and belonging that I think that I can't, or I haven't really been able to find in any other thing that I've done. Interesting. And obviously, you know, like, the more I did it, the more I realized, like, I was actually good at it, and then I couldn't really see myself doing anything else like if I was gonna go into math were there things that you tried before musical theater when you were kind of like trying to figure yourself out that like didn't quite work well my dad's Argentinian right okay. and so they have an amazing soccer team mm. and so I did a lot of sports growing up like I did soccer until I was probably five um, no actually I did until I was seven I did soccer when I was seven and then I did baseball and then I did basketball mm. um, but you can't really play those sports if you're scared of the ball, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and when you get older, there's this really interesting thing that happens where people actually start to take it seriously and they be they become competitive. Yeah. And so yeah. like that's when like checking starts getting becoming yes, a thing. Yes. And it's I'm not for that. Like I don't well, like pain and uh, You know what's you know what is interesting about what we're talking about yeah. here is like there's there's the fear of physical danger, right. of I'm gonna get fucking decked, of I'm gonna get a baseball to the face that is like, you know, a, a primal scary thing. Yeah. And then there's the fear of I'm gonna go out there in front of 500 people and I'm gonna fucking sing a song and I'm gonna put myself out there in a vulnerable position and that's a fucking scary thing too. I guess. But that's a, a fear that you've been able to overcome. That's more emotional pain. Right, I think right, like right. physical pain, like bleeding or... It seems a little bit more daunting to me, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I don't really have to, to go in with a fear of like, oh, I could die on stage, right? right like, I mean, right. it's happened, but like, that's not really like in my control versus are, like... When you, when you perform, do you get nervous at all or are you typically good with the crowd? I used to not get nervous at all. Really? And then I think when it became something that was like more serious right like if now if i go on stage especially like if it's in front of a new york audience or something like that mm. i do get more nervous because i know people are there's there, there's more of a of a high quality theater scene here an right? expectation an expectation sure. higher expectation of like oh this like is he gonna live up to to 
whatever everyone else does. And so, like, I think it's it's the judgment that probably makes me more nervous than anything. Interesting. The fear of judgment. Do you do you, do you have a fear of, of judgment? It, and is that just like, you know, I mean, if you're willing to talk about it, like, is that a thing in your personal life at all, or is that like just on the stage? Like, how are you with like being confident about just being yourself and, and just in life? I think it's it's both. Sure. I, I think I, I think I feel it everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I bring kind of who I am as a person to the stage. Yeah, sure. Um, middle school kind of screwed me up. Let's talk it's, about middle school. If you're down, what's it, up with what happened uh, in middle school? Yeah, I had a lot of friends who were um, they were like fake friends, right? Yeah, like sure. They pretended to be friends with me, but it was only as like a. Oh, like, and then we're gonna break off and exclude you and do our own. Kind Middle of thing. schoolers are strangely Machiavellian. I don't in that way. Yeah, I don't yeah. really understand it. Yeah, I think like a lot of people want to feel a sense of power in middle school, and mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. they. I don't even. I, I don't even. Uh, yeah, I'm like talking about it as if I know what middle schoolers think when like I've repressed it so far in my memory, mm -hmm. like deep down, that I don't remember anything that happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just know that I have some untapped trauma from middle school that I just I, <laughs> I've just chosen to ignore. And and, and w like nowadays, do you feel like you have a good support system? You got good friends that you oh, you yeah. can count on being true. Well, yeah, high school definitely when I became more mature. Yeah. And, like, could actually carry myself yeah. confidently. Yeah, the right people gravitate towards you. It's a, when I was in middle school, I also like had you know I was very nervous. Yeah, and, and, and exactly. You, you grow up and you realize everyone was, you know, the people who were like you know the the, the kids who, whatever you could say, they were the popular kids and like you know uh, uh, they would make you feel a little bit weird. But then you grow up and you meet. You ever meet? Uh, have you met up with anyone? From middle school in your adult life, you're an adult, they're an adult, and then you are like, "That was the everything that was going on in middle school is so stupid." Yeah, does it happen? Well, yeah, they're all so nice to me after they've treated me like like dirt for the past. Like, it's just the weirdest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like, people completely change, mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. on their end and on my end. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. I learned more to not really be affected by those kind of people but they've yeah. also realized what they were doing in the past was kind of shitty and so they've yeah. been nice to more people because they've realized that n kindness gets them farther in life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so <laughs> it's just really wild to see them again if, if you go to a reunion and stuff what I, I this is a loaded question here but how do you from the kind of insecure middle time middle school times and to now what do you feel like what tools have you gained to help you navigate through life Lead with love, because that's what everyone needs. I like that, man. I was listening to, um, who, what was the name of the, the woman who, who got, um, uh, who was supposed to be engaged and then? Uh, Jade. Jade, yeah. okay. She, was, she said something really profound about like, you know, after you, a after she realized that she didn't have love anymore, yeah. that she realized that she could anchor herself in family and friends yep, yep, and yep. work and like I think that love exists in all of those things right? yes 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 there's like a love pie chart exactly. and they all are kind of uh, uh, creating a little symphony and so of some sort she was actually I think searching for love in other places of her life that she didn't realize it existed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and I just find that fascinating. I'm I'm still trying to find more love, and it doesn't necessarily have to be held by the people who I think I need it from, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Joel, thanks for sharing all of this stuff, man. This was this was super cool talking to you. <laughs> what what do you hope for yourself in the future? For myself? Yeah. Uh. Oh God, I. <laughs> It's okay if you don't know. I should know. Uh, yeah, there's no reason to know. We I, don't even know if there's going to be a future. There could be a meteor. Yeah, I just hope It happened to the dinosaurs. It could happen to us. I hope that, like, my future self looks back on my past self and says, like, hey, like, you made the right decision there. You made the mm -hmm. right call there. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there are so many decisions that we're going to be faced with in life that I don't think anyone's really prepared to make. Yeah. 
And so if I make a few right decisions, then I think that's all that matters. That's awesome, man. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the this computer before we go? This was completely unexpected. I don't... <laughs> I thought my friend was going to be talking. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure talking to you, too. Um, I would give my Instagram, but I don't really... I don't think I need to promote anything. I don't think, anything no, I don't don't think anything so. To promote. Um, live a happy life. <laughs> Joel, very nice talking to you, man. Thank you very much Thank for sharing. Thank you. Hey, it's wishing you good luck, man. Yeah, you too. Um, oh, man. Now I'm luck. thinking about my middle school times, and people are going to listen to you. They're going to think about their middle school times. I appreciate you sharing all that, man. Of course. Anytime. It's a pleasure. Take care, brother. I love this green dress. This is cool. Thank you. Where'd you get it? Amazon.com. I got this on Amazon.com. Fuck Bezos. Fuck Bezos, but he got us. He did. He, he got, got me us. good. He won. <laughs> uh, what's your name? My name is Julia. Julia, what's uh, what's your life like, man? Um, I'm a student. I just came from class, and I actually just saw a sticker that said, "Calling FaceTiming your mom is not therapy." And then I ran into Therapy Gecko. <laughs> so this is my therapy now. Therapy Gecko is also not therapy. I wish I'll <laughs> tack that onto the sticker. Okay. When's the last time you FaceTimed your mom? Uh, I called her like as soon as I saw the sticker. Oh, you did? Yeah. And uh, how was that? Was that the first time you'd called her in a while? No, I call her all the time, but she was busy. Mm -hmm. So it was a short call. What do you typically talk about with your mom? Um, life, you know, catching up. My dad just recently passed. So oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> how uh, How's your relationship with your mom? It's it's good it's a little different now i've come from like a family of three so now it's just me and her mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you know dynamics changed a bit but yeah can i ask and you know i know it's probably a certain subject and we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to but w when he passed did that kind of bring you guys closer together at all yeah we could talk about my dad i love my dad and he's awesome um, and it did bring us together, but now I'm like studying away, so that's kind of hard. Mm, mm. Where, where are you studying away? Here. I'm from oh. Miami. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. What, uh, what made you want to come to New York? Um, my dad actually instilled New York into me. Really? I was born here, but he really gave me that passion for New York, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. yeah, everything I do is because of him. Mm, mm. Tell me more about everything that you do. What are you, what are you studying? Um, I go to NYU. I made my own major. Um, it's you can called, do that? Yeah, you can. What's the, what's it called? It's called the aesthetic of blackness. Mm. So I basically see the ways that black people function within different art sectors and the way art is representative of black people and how black people have influenced art in return. Mm, mm. Yeah. How, uh, what, what year are you in school? I'm like a junior slash senior. Okay. And are you, when you get to a senior, uh, are you going to have to write like a senior thesis of some kind? Yeah. Do you know kind of what the, the thesis statement of the thesis is going to be? I don't. Interesting. It's really weird because I got into like what I do because of my dad and yeah. I would always like call him when I have papers and stuff. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. now it's kind of like me learning how to fend for myself and discover myself and stuff. Yeah. What are some like kind of central truths or main ideas that you've taken away from, from your studies? Um, hmm. A central truth? I don't know. It's just really interesting how race like impacts everything mm -hmm. in America, in the world. Everything really is systemic. It's really built off of history. So you have to understand the past to understand the present and the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this a subject that you've always been very interested in? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. What did you want to be when you were like a little kid? When I was a little kid, I wanted to go to NYU, which I do. Okay, awesome. Um, and I, I think I wanted to do fashion or something. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, are you still into fashion I now? Am. Yeah. Are you sh are you like uh, uh, where do you typically shop at? Is it Amazon or you do like <laughs> thrift stores? I'm or? poor. Um, I <laughs> I don't know. I I like shop cider. That's okay. a good one okay. for my poor bitches out there. Okay. And so your mom is back in Miami. Yes. And uh, has it has it been difficult being away from her at this time? Yeah, it's been mm -hmm. pretty hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What um. What kinds of things do you like kind of do to, to keep a good relationship with her? Um, it's really just important to just check up on each other. Um, you know, mental health is 
important, obviously, and we're just trying to be strong for each other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to recognize that, you know, there, there might be a facade behind the strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has it been hard to like keep up a? Do do you feel like a need to keep up a, a facade of some kind? Yeah, I actually do. Like I just, my I don't want to see my mom cry. My mom doesn't want to see me cry. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I don't know. But we do need to talk about my dad to each other because we're the mm -hmm. only people who really understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it's uh, you don't have any siblings, just you, mom and dad. Have you been like talking with any other people that your dad was close to in his life, like any of his friends or people he worked with or? sort of commiserating with with other people in his life so my dad was a security guard and he actually died at work but there was like all the kids at the school like gave us so many notes and letters and like oh, that's thoughtful beautiful that's beautiful ideologies that my dad instilled in them and stuff like that so sometimes like just reading those mm -hmm. can help can I hear any of, of these of these ideologies that, that he instilled in them that that touched you yeah I think one person said that like on his like last day mm -hmm. of on earth <laughs> that mm -hmm. um he saw like this one kid who looked sad and he was like what's wrong buddy and then the kid's like oh like these kids are you know bullying me they're making fun of me and then he was like one of the last things he said was to like uplift some child and he was mm -hmm. like you know don't ever let these kids get to you mm -hmm. you have to know who you are yourself and once you know that like it, their words won't affect you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's awesome that's great. That's cool that um, that uh, he worked with so many so many people that like would write you these letters and and have your know, stories about him and whatnot. It sounds like he touched a lot of people. Yeah, he did. He has his own holiday in Miami. He has his own holiday in Miami. December twenty third. Was it what is what's what's his, your dad's name? Vasty Dorville. Vasty Dorville. Is it is December twenty third in Miami? Is Vasty Dorville Day? Yes. Happy Vasty Dorville Day. Woo! What, 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 how do people celebrate Rasty Dorville Day? I mean, I don't know. It's happened last year, so we'll see this year how we celebrate. Beautiful, beautiful. What's your name again? Julia. Julia. Julia, thank you very much for talking <laughs> to me about all this stuff. This thank is awesome. Thank you, Gecko. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, on December 23rd, kiss your daddy. Julia, thank you very much for talking to Gecko. I thank appreciate you, it, and good luck to you and your mom. Hello. What's your name? My name is Serafina. What's your name? Serafina? Yeah. I like that. That sounds like a name of a very nice brand of bottled water. Oh, thank you. What's your life like, Serafina? I mean, it's pretty cool. Like, I'm from California. Okay. I'm, I've been here for, like, less than a month because I'm here for school. Oh, really? Yeah. How are you uh, finding this to be different from California? I mean... I like how there's so many just like random people here and they're like all in their own little world. Yeah. Like it's so fun to just people watch and just like people are just doing whatever they want and I love it there or I love it here because I feel like in California a lot of people like to put on like a facade which like people do here too but mm -hmm. especially in this area like in between classes it's just like nice to just people watch. Where in California are you from? Um, I'm from Orange County. Okay cool. So I'm, in, I'm in town here from L.A. Oh, really? Yeah, and I got to say, I, I, I'm with you. I feel like this is a way better place to people watch. It's a way different energy. Lo a lot of places in Los Angeles, I might have said this before, but they kind of look like fake cities that were made to test nuclear weapons on. <laughs> they don't feel like people actually live there. Yeah. And here it's a fucking amazing. There's a, a, human beings walking by, not cars. It's yeah. wonderful. What made you want to come here to New York? I mean, I don't know. I... Like, I'm, sometimes I'm kind of, like, delusional. So I'm just like, oh, for college, I was like, I just want to go somewhere far. So yeah, I was like, yeah, let me yeah. just try New York. So I only yeah. applied to schools from New York and California. And I just chose NYU because I was like, that seems like a good school. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and then I mm -hmm. ended up getting in. And so now I'm here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I really like it here. And I like the particular school that I'm in. What made you want to go far? Was there, like, a pent-up um, cabin fever of just being in Orange County for so long? I mean, yeah, that, but also, like, I just wanted to, like, be able to be by myself. Like, I really like my alone time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't, like, I love my family, but, like, I need my space. Of course, of course. So. How, do you, how do you think your family feels about you going so far away? Do you think that they, are they, like, proud of you that you're taking your own initiative to go live your own life, or are they kind of, like, encouraging you to stay home? No, they were pretty supportive about me going away far because 
um, my mom did the same thing. Like she's from Mich- or she's from Canada, but grew up in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then randomly, she just decided to go out to California, mm-hmm. and I kind of did the opposite. But like, it would be a little hypocritical if they wouldn't support that. But luckily for me, they do. Um, what is your what do you study in school? Um, I get to like make my own major. So oh, okay, just like Julia. Yeah, but I'm only a freshman. But I, so I don't really know yet. Maybe something in media and music and okay. possibly fashion. Okay, okay. What, uh, do you make music? Are you interested in making music? I mean, maybe. Like, I I'm, I'm don't make it right now, but, like, if I ever were to produce in the future, like, that would be pretty fun. Okay, do you know, like, what kinds of themes of anything that you would want to make music about? Mm, maybe, like, some R&B. Okay. Yeah. But awesome. I, I don't know. I kind of like everything. How are you adjusting to being in the city are you like do you, do you know anyone here i mean yeah i know a couple people like oh i just made friends with them but like nice. going in here like i didn't know anyone was that scary eh, like like i oh, said no I like you my were like i'm time. ready Fuck i like my alone time okay so nice it was okay nice yeah. would you consider yourself introverted i mean yeah but it also depends on my mood okay yeah. okay that's awesome. That's cool that um, you weren't afraid. Because, I mean, that's a, it's a fucking daunting <laughs> thing to move across the country where you don't know anyone. Mm-hmm. But you kind of fucking brute forced it, it sounds. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. Like, you kind of just go with the flow with life. So. That's awesome. Was um, What is it that you hope to do in the future? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't... Like, when I first was applying to college, I wanted to be more fashion-based. So I was, like, maybe a fashion designer. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, since I feel like I'm more music-based, maybe if I were to like plan an organized concert or something like that. Mm. But I don't really have like a clear. Path. I'm seeing a big theme of all the people I've been talking to today. Of like everyone's, you know, I'm, I, I like talking to people about what they're thinking about doing for the future. But everyone's like living day by day in the moment, yeah. which is the smart move, <laughs> you know, because future's never guaranteed. So it's good to be living now. What's your name again? Serafina. Serafina. Yes. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, it's okay to be delusional. That's also a way of manifesting. I love it. Serafina, thank you very much for talking to Gecko, man. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. Have a nice day. You as well. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Michael. Michael, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, bro. How's How you life, doing? man? Life is great. I love life. It's my favorite thing. It's your favorite thing? Yeah. It's your favorite thing? Yeah. Why living. is it your favorite thing? Because I love living, man. I like having fun. Have you always loved to live? Yeah. Really? So even yeah. since you were like a little boy, even when you first started living, you're a tiny little single-celled organism. You loved, you loved it. Once you experienced your first cell... You were like, I'm in. As soon as I came out of my dad, loved it. I love that, man. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so what is this? What, what what is this? I've never heard of this. This this is this is this is this. Is this? I I heard him say podcast. You do okay. a podcast. This is, yeah, it's a podcast. It's 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 this. It's we're, I'm talking to you. You're talking to me. We're alive. We were both once come. And now we miraculously have the ability to hold microphones and communicate with each other. You've yeah. lived a different life uh, than I have, than have any of the other people walking around in here. And we're communicating our experiences of uh, being come. So what is this about? It's about you. It's about me. It's about life. What did oh, you say your name was again? Michael. Michael. Michael, yeah. what is your life like, man? What do you do? You say you love life. What's your life like? What do you do? Are you in school? Are you working? Are I you work, uh, walking around? I work two jobs, and I'm also in school. Okay. I work for the Nature Conservancy, and I also work for Regal Cinemas. Okay. Uh, and I'm also in school. I'm an accounting major. Oh, nice. Yeah. I want to ask about all three of those things. I'm going to start with the movie theater. Uh, tell me about the premiere of the Minions. How much popcorn did you have to clean up off the floor? A lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, anytime a movie premieres, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot to deal with. Do you get perks? Yeah, yeah. I get free movies okay. all the time. Yeah. Are you like a Are you a cinephile? No. Okay. No, not at all. <laughs> are you Are you enthusiast of anything at all? Um. Yeah. Money. <laughs> you're enthusiast of money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're an accountant. So your money, your whole, your whole life is going to be about counting money. It's going to be about money, yeah. What is it about money that is uh, so enthusiastic towards it you? Gives you freedom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's say you had all the money in the world. Let's say you just what, what, what to you, is an amount of money 
Where if you reached it, you'd be like, I'm good, I'm chilling, I'm free. 30 million. Let's say you had 30 million. Yeah. What are we doing on Wednesday? What's a day of your life like, you $30 million? When 30 million? Well, I would never stop working. And stop really? Yeah, no. Really? No. You would never stop working, even if you had $30 million? No. Why? Um, because there's more money to be made. Hmm. And um, I think complacency is pretty much the death of any man. So mm, Interesting, yeah. interesting. So at that point, when you have $30 million, but you want to keep working because you don't want to be complacent, it feels like it's less about the money and like, I want a bigger yacht, I want a larger house, and more about just, you know, you like the grind. Yeah, it's both. Mm -hmm. Like, you could want more things, and you could also just like the grind because you don't want to, you know, get lazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could pursue other things. You could pursue the gym. You know, you'll have freedom to have time to do that. But also, like, dude, if I had $30 million, I'll, I'll tell you what I would do, honestly. Please. Honestly, okay. Please. So, I just made $30 million. Automatically buy a house, buy all that shit, right? Yep. Then, we're clubbing. You know, we're hanging out with models. We're in the Bugatti. We're okay. in the Lambo. Okay. We're having a great time. Okay. And we just wake up in a different country. Like, not even in a different state, different country. You know, people yeah. like to say this. They like to be like, well, one day, you know, a hedonic treadmill, you'll get sick of the models. You'll get sick of the cars. You'll get sick of the countries. Never. No. <laughs> no, you no. wouldn't get sick of it. I think it'd be <laughs> awesome. That, that's what people who don't have the money say. <laughs> I, think, I think that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Do you hope to get there one day? Absolutely, yeah. Mm, okay. What does the path there look like? Dude, the path is working extreme, like just keep working hard. Okay. Investing. I don't get tired. So that's why I work two jobs and I also go to school because I don't feel, I feel a lot of energy all the time. Okay. So that's an interesting thing. You're, you're on your grinds. You're working all these jobs, but to you, like... You do not get tired? Do you not get, like, stressed out from the grind? Do you not burn no. out at all? No. You're just wired differently? Yeah, because I don't see it as a chore. I see it towards... I see it as, like, I must do it in order to get to where I want to go. Interesting. And interesting. let's say I got a job at the bank making 30 an hour, 9 to 5, mm -hmm. right? I would literally go... I would still go to my regal job immediately after and work 6 to 11. Interesting. And make 15 an hour. Interesting. And, 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 and there's no, like pain points to any of this you never are like at the end of you know uh, a, a 6 a.m to 2 a.m day and you're like fucking fuck or or the whole time you're like i'm in it i'm alive we're grinding <laughs> that almost ended me no right, no um, no you cannot be ended <laughs> exactly especially I'm not glad, by my flimsy gecko i'm glad sign. that you realize that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> i see that yeah so um no, if it was like 6 to 2, obviously I'd be tired, but I need to do what I have to do regardless of how I feel. So. Have you always been this way, or is this something that you, you adapted at some point in your life? Um, I think after high school. Uh, I'm, I'm 22. I'm about to be 22 in like a month, so I've been in college for four years now, almost. Um, I think after high school, I adapted that. Okay. What yeah. do you kind of like could you pin it to anything about what made you make this adaptation um being poor mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. uh realizing that like yeah just people around me like if you're lazy you're not gonna get anything done interesting yeah now tell me about like your personal life friends family are do they share a similar mindset to you or yeah or? i try to surround myself with people who do Okay. Uh, if they don't, I, I still love them, but I yeah. distance myself. Tell me about your family. Like your parent, do you have siblings too? Yeah, I have a sister. She's so, very smart. Okay, she like you with with wanting to grind a lot. Mm, no, but she's like she's taking a, a simple path. Like go to school, do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, she's not she's not hyperactive. Like she's not trying to be like, all right, I'm gonna work two jobs. I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna run a business. This and this and that. But sure, she's sure. like, all right, I'm gonna just go to school, do mm -hmm. what I have to do, and. It should work, right? Because our, our system is set up that way. Like, if you do what you have to do, you know, you don't have You'll to be do comfortable. Too, you don't sure. have to do too yeah, much. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, sure. You know, it's not that hard to live comfortably. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go beyond that, then it does get... That's where it gets difficult. What about your parents? What would you say their philosophy is? My dad, same thing. Hard worker. Was a court officer. 
my mm-hmm. mom's a good mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about your friends? Like, did you have? Did you when you said you made that adaptation, right? Like, can in high I school, can I make part? a shout out real quick? You can to totally my friends. Make, please make a shout R- out. Rush Kapasig. Um, <laughs> Rush she Kappa smiled. Sig. Rush Kappa Sig a thing. Yeah, there's no, there's no better fraternity. So just Rush Kappa Sig. Shout out to my friends. Are those those are your, those are your homies? They're yeah, on the grind. those are my brothers. When you're when you have your private island and you're having your big party, all the brothers from they're Rush Kappa Sig are there. Automatically, no matter That's what, awesome. they're there. Did you have? Yeah. Friends from high school who you had to not ditch because you love them, but yeah. limit your time with them. Yeah. Was that no, hard? There were some I had to straight up ditch. Was that hard? No. No, okay. no, it wasn't. Okay. Did you have. Did, was it like a. Was it a straight up ghost or did you have a conversation with them where you're like, listen, I'm on my grind. I don't got time for you anymore. So I always try to converse with them first. Like, I, I always be like, yo, you know, you're not living up to your full potential, something along those lines. And if they're just like, okay, or they just, you know, keep doing what they're doing, sure. then no, you know. That's it. Well, what's your name again? Michael. Michael. All right, so you understand what this is now? Kind of just talking about stuff. Just talking shit, Just right? talking shit. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for being a part of this, even though you don't know what it is. I, I don't have no idea. I heard there's a thing later tonight. There is a thing later tonight. I'm doing a show tonight at the Bell House. You're going? Yeah, you're going? Fuck yes. Can I come? Yeah. Is it free? No, it's not free. Fuck, how much do I have to... Like, Pay to get it's, in. It's thirty dollars. That's not. That's not too bad. That's not too bad, right? Michael, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before no, we go? No, rush cap stick. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for talking to a gecko, man. Hope to see you tonight. Bell House, seven thirty. Were you with Jade earlier? I was. Yeah. That was just a really cool <laughs> interview. I, I I loved her energy, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear no, that definitely. she's got a new that's life going sister. on. That's my sister. That's your so sister. That's my sister. Yeah. Okay. Did you know the guy? I did, yeah. Okay, what, what's I from did. your... I want to talk about you, but okay. just on the top line, what was your perspective on her okay, whole thing? Okay, so my perspective, right? Yeah. He was a great guy, and it just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, he he was like a big brother to me, you know, because it's only me and my sister. She's my only sibling. Mm-hmm. And he... I just felt like he just completely tricked everyone. Really? It came out of nowhere. Really, it really? It really did. And it's sad, you know, because she's... She has so much love to give yeah. and to see her kind of close up mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that and um, distance herself. Yeah. Especially because she deserves love. Everyone does. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm really happy for her because I, I could see like just in her face when she was talking about how excited yeah. she is to like have been like it sounds like it was a roller coaster of like devastation. Definitely. But then like I got a new life to live and I'm excited yeah. about it and I'm, yeah. I'm stoked for her. Me too. But let's get into you. Okay. What is your name? My name's Isabella. Isabella, very nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So what are you all about, okay. man? What's going on? Um, so I need some advice. I'll think. try my okay. best. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm in a new relationship. Okay. We've been talking for a few months, and we just made it official recently. Nice. And um, so I was really hurt years ago in a past relationship. And I feel like, in a way, I still have a guard up. And I feel like he's a great guy. He really is. But I feel like it's hard for me to like give myself to him and to completely let him in. Why do you so, why do you think that is? I feel like I'm so scared to be hurt again. Were you you were hurt in the past? Yeah. Can I kinda ask like a top line of, of yeah, what happened? Yeah, just like back cheating. Then? Okay, and sure. Stuff, yeah. Sure, sure. Huh. What is there like could you describe kind of like the aspect of yourself that you're afraid to to show? I feel like I can't like fully express my feelings to him cuz he's a very affectionate guy. Okay. And it's hard for me to like reciprocate. Yeah, and sure, so, sure, yeah. yeah. Are you and like naturally like to your core, are you an affectionate person no, as well? Okay. Not really. I used to be. But then in my past relationship, I like okay. closed that part of myself off. Okay. Now, now, like, okay, look, looking past that, I know you said you closed it, that part of yourself off, but like, you thinking about yourself and how you in this life want to connect with other people. Yeah. What do you believe for yourself is the best way to do it? Just expressing yourself okay. without. I feel like I have too much pride. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And I feel like I just need to look past that. Because I, and like, to me, you know, I know you had this past experience with this yeah. guy, and I know you're kind of, like, you know, 
your 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 guard is up a little bit yeah. because of the things that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. But like throwing all of that away and just looking clearly at what you believe is the right way to approach this. Whatever you see is, I think, what you should follow. If you, yeah. you know, can summon the courage to. I know it's hard. Yeah, just, I feel like I just need to be myself. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, happens. What's going on uh, in the rest of your life, man? What, okay. are, you, what are you studying? Um, or, I'm studying criminal justice. Okay. I live in Florida. But um, I'm moving back to New York. I've been here, like, 12 times in the past, like, six months. Mm, so. mm. <laughs> do, you like, do you like New York better I than Florida? Do. Um, so I grew up here in New York. And I went to college in Florida for a year, and I'm ready to come home. What uh, What do you like better about New York than Florida? I feel like Florida. It's just it's a party all the time. Okay. <laughs> are you not Are you not a party person? I used to be, but I'm. I feel burnt out from all the parties. Okay. Do you, and like Miami do, and everything. Does any ounce of you miss the partying? Um, I do, but I feel like it's time to. It's time to chill out a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What uh, What do you hope for the future? What kind of life do you want to live? Um, what I want to go to law school. Okay. Hopefully Fordham or NYU. Amazing, amazing. Just checking out the campus today. You know? Amazing. Um, you know, just being happy. It's the most important thing. So with law, like, what's the underlying thing, like the the, the philosophy that you have that that you makes you feel like it's an important thing for you to do? I just want to help people. I like that. I, I like want, that. I want, I want um, to make sure everybody's, you know, good. Can I ask, doings, you know, you know uh, ba back to sort of this issue you were having with this relationship. Yeah. Like, was there anything you learned from observing what was going on with your sister that, like, informed your take on what's going on with you? I think that kind of also made me rethink myself. Sure. And, and you know put that guard back up a little bit more because mm -hmm. of this guy she was with just completely you thought he was such a good guy and then he's just yeah good. sure so, so now you got like two examples yeah, floating around but you know this guy i'm with now he's a great guy yeah and it's not right for me for me to do anything bad to him you know he doesn't deserve that dude it's hard i'm like i'm no expert on any of this <laughs> shit but it's like, to me, I'd like to think, I, I'd like to think for me, I'm like, with my relationships with other people, it's like, if a person, if I put my trust into a person and they fuck me over, it's okay. You know, I'm putting yeah. my trust into them, knowing full well that that could happen. And if it does happen, that's okay. I yeah, signed so those terms it. and conditions. Yeah, so be definitely. it. You know, I'll move on. I, cause I, I, I'm trying to act from like a foundation of like, <laughs> I got myself. I, I mean, all the shit that your sister was saying yeah. of like, I got myself. I got my yeah. own foundation. I know what's going on, and I'll sign the terms and conditions that are like, hey, listen, th this could go wrong. This could fuck me over, but I'm going in knowing that. Yeah. And if it happens, I'll move on. I'll live life. I got a well-rounded yeah. thing going on. And, Everything and will be okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the most important thing. What is your name again? Isabella. Isabella. Yeah. Thank you very much for talking You're to me. Welcome. Tell you, I don't know if she's around, but tell her I said thank you again. <laughs> I will. Could I give myself a shout out? Of course. Is there okay. anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? I have a word of the day. It's a quote, okay? I'd love to hear it. Okay, so I saw this on TikTok. It's like, don't wait because you'll never truly be ready for anything. Just this do is true. it. This is very Just true. Do it. I feel like if you're waiting around, waiting to be ready, you never will be. Never. The future does not come. <laughs> there is only now. That's very true. Okay. So my Instagram is Isabella Keo, K E O G H H. Isabella. Yes. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much for I'm talking to me. Oh, thank you, man. Fan. You coming to the show? Uh, we'll try. Okay. Definitely. I'll see you around in the universe. Nice. Folks, this has been Being a Gecko in New York City. Uh, thank you all for watching. This was an awesome episode. Oh my god. There's so many things. I gotta go back and and watch this one. This was uh, this is one of the best ones of these that we've ever done. So many cool stories. I'm like, I'm every time I do this, I'm like, you know, because we normally do the phone calls, and I'm like, oh, I feel like because people are anonymous on the phone, that's gonna make them more willing to share stuff about their lives than if they're here in person. And every time I do this, I'm, I'm amazed, I'm touched, I'm grateful that people come here and they, with their face to the world, share shit that's going on with them. And it's awesome. And I appreciate you guys for watching. 
and I'll see you around the universe. Gek bless you all.